हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आईआईटी गुवाहाटी एंड व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर द इन द कोर्स मॉलिक्यूलर बायोलॉजी मोस्ट ऑफ दीस बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स प्ले क्रूशियल रोल्स इन इन द इन इन रनिंग द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज्म्स और दे आर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग इन वन और अदर वे इनटू Uh, the different types of molecular biology product uh, molecular biology processes so uh, what we have discussed uh, we have discussed about the dna in the previous lecture where we have discussed about the dna and dna is the crucial uh, biomolecule which is required for the genetic information so it carries the information from the one generation to another generations and then we have also discussed that the the the, the Uh, DNA, which is going to be involved into a process called replications and the transcriptions. So, with the help of the transcription, the DNA is actually going to synthesize the RNA, and this RNA is then actually going to participate into the reaction of the protein synthesis in a process which is known as translations. So, the enzyme which is actually going to synthesize the RNA from the DNA is known as the RNA polymerase, right? So RNA polymerase is actually going to read the DNA, and it is actually going to synthesize the RNA. And this process is called as uh, transcription. And then RNA is actually going to participate into a into a series of events, which is known as translation to synthesize the protein. and uh, so in today's lecture we are going to discuss uh, the properties of the rna and the structure of the rna and how you can be able to isolate the rna from the cell and how you can be able to characterize the rna so that and estimate the rna and so on uh, so uh, why it is important for us to understand the rna because the rna is mainly been responsible for synthesis of the protein so if you want to do an experiment related to the expression studies and other kinds of studies then you are supposed to study the rna now when we talk about the rna right uh, we are actually going to talk about the three different types of rna right so we have three different types of rna we have the uh, transfer rna or uh, commonly known as trna so this is called as transfer rna then we also have the ribosomal rna or it's called rrna and we also have the messenger rna or it is called as mrna the mrna is actually going to provide the message or actually it is going to provide the informations in which uh, in which sequence uh we are actually going to add the amino acids so it actually going to provide the information of the synthesis which means which amino acid i should add like that kind of information so for example if i want to start writing a letter i have to first know what is the sentence right so if i know the sentences then my brain is actually going to read that sentence and that sentence is nothing but this messenger rna right and then i am going to bring a b c d like that okay so that a b c d information is this now you are actually going to read the uh, help of the transfer rna and the ribosomal rna so transfer rna is actually going to bring the uh, amino acids in the same uh, sequence what the sequence is given here right so if it says you uh, you bring the alanine right it is actually going to bring the alanine if it is going to say the methionine then it's actually going to bring the methionine then who will bring the so this is actually going to bring the amino acids then these amino acids are actually going to be joined by 
the ribosomal RNA, right? And uh, you know their amino acid are actually going to join by a bond which is called as peptide bond. So basically, the job of the ribosomal RNA is to form the peptide bond between the A and B, right? And that's how it is actually going to start synthesizing the protein molecules, right? So these are the some basic or the uh, brief overview of the function of these amino uh, RNA species. One it is actually going to provide the message. So, it is actually going to provide the information of synthesis, right? In what uh, sequence I should add the amino acids and also going to provide which amino acid. And then the transfer RNA is actually going to bring the that particular RNA and the ribosomal RNA is actually going to collect the information from the transfer RNA and messenger RNA and that is how it is actually going to join the amino acids by uh, by the help of a peptide bond and that is how you are actually going to have the uh, sequence and it is actually going to have the information okay. Uh, so uh, this is just an alphabet actually the, there is no amino acid with the B right and so on. So uh, today in today's lecture we are not going to cover the structure of transfer RNA or the ribosomal RNA we will only focus on to the messenger RNA. Uh, we will take up the structure of transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA when we are actually going to discuss about the trans translation because uh, all of these three uh, I mean, uh, messenger, all of these three RNA species are actually going to participate actively into the translation process. So we are only going to focus today in today's lecture. We are only going to focus on to the messenger RNA in our sub in our. Uh, subsequent lecture we will focus on to the transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA when we are going to discuss about the translation. So we will talk about the structure of the messenger RNA. So messenger RNA is actually uh, as I said you know it should have the information of the synthesis right. So it is going to provide the information of the synthesis of protein which it actually going to take up from the uh, DNA, right. So that information is originally being present in DNA, but that information will then going to be taken up by the messenger RNA. And uh, so messenger RNA is having the three distinct part. One, it is actually going to have the, so it, this is the five prime end and this is actually the three prime end, okay. And remember that uh, we have discussed in detail about the RNA structures when we or the composition of the RNA when we were talking about the DNA, right. So RNA is actually also a polynucleotide molecules, RNA is single stranded in majority of the cases and RNA is also going to have the uh, phosphodiester linkages and phosphate and black bones. So RNA is also going to be made up of, of the, uh, the sugar phosphate and base right and as far as the base is concerned the RNA is actually going to have the A, G and U and C it does not have the T right so there is no T present okay so T is absent in the case of RNA whereas the T is present in the DNA instead of T it is actually going to have the uracil okay. And that is the basic difference between the RNA and the DNA. Other than that, uh, it is going to be single stranded. So there will be extensive secondary structures what are going to be present in the RNA species. And uh, as far as the structure is concerned, the RNA is going to have the five prime cap. So this is the cap which is actually going to be uh, protect the RNA sequences because RNAs are very very susceptible for the RNAs molecules and then it is actually going to have the 5 prime UTR. So 5 prime UTR is a place which is actually going to provide the uh, docking site for the RNA polymerase. In detail actually uh, how the RNA polymerase is going to sit and how it is actually going to recognize the promoter regions and all that that actually we are going to discuss when we are going to talk about the uh, translation. So uh, in the 5 prime UTR you are going to have the promoter right 
and there is a definite composition of the promoter so it's going to have the uh, data box it's going to have the minus 10 region minus 35 regions and so on so all that i think uh, can be discussed when we were discussing about the uh, transcription and translation so promoter can be of strong promoter or it can be of weak promoters so promoters are actually going to provide a docking site for the uh, uh, for the translation uh, initiation site so it's going to provide the translation initiation site and uh, it's going to allow the it's a sitting of the rna polymerase and uh, so, so it's going to provide the docking site for the protein synthesis okay uh, so it's going to provide a, a, a docking site for the uh, ribosomal machinery. And uh, this was going to be a promoter. So it is actually going to be a strong promoter or the weak promoter. And it is actually going to provide the uh, docking site for the trans uh, translational machinery. Next to this, you are actually going to have the coding sequence. So this is a, a region which is going to be a coding sequence. So this is the region which is going to give you the protein. So it's actually going to provide the information in terms of the genetic code. And uh, these codes are actually going to be read by the ribosomal machinery and as well as by the tRNA. And that's how it is actually going to have the help you in the synthesis of the protein. So uh, genetic information is encoded in the face of genetic code and each genetic code is actually going to be uh, you know corresponding to the amino acids on these amino acids are then going to be added into uh, uh, into the ribosomal machinery by the help of the peptide bond and that's how it is actually going to synthesize. And then you also have the three prime UTRs. So three prime UTRs are actually going to be the regulatory side which actually going to provide the, uh, the regulation of this whole translation process. And then at the T prime end, you are actually going to have the polyadenylation site. So uh, polyadenylation is uh, very important because polyadenylation, you can actually have the addition of the A's uh, starting from the 50 to 200. And depending upon the polyadenylation, you are actually going to decide the age of the messenger RNA because this is actually going to chewed because remember that uh, from this side uh, by a RNAs. So if the RNA is chewing this amino acid, uh, this uh, R R messenger RNA because R messenger RNA is going to be present in the cytosol instead of the New, uh, inside the nucleus. So RNA is actually going to be synthesized by a process of transcription inside the nucleus then it is actually going to be transported outside into the cytosol and then it is actually going to provide a docking site for the uh, protein synthesis machinery which means it is actually going to allow the assembly of the ribosomal machinery like the small subunit and the large subunit and that will happen on to the 5 prime UTR and then uh, it is actually going to synthesize the proteins. But how long this amino acid, this uh, messenger RNA is going to remain active into the cytosol that will be decided by the uh, 3 prime uh, poly A tail. Okay. So this, this region is called as the poly A tail. Okay. And uh, this poly A tail is uh, going to be or uh, the Rebel RNAs, which are very active within the cytosol, are actually going to chew these uh, RNA from the five prime, three prime end. And uh, the moment they are actually going to be chewing up, chewing up like this, they once they hit the coding sequence, then they are actually going to start. Uh, you know, the, the this this messenger RNA will not be useful for the uh, synthesis or for the synthesis of the protein because now it is actually going to start synthesizing the uh, you know the, tr the cryptid protein or the truncated proteins and that may not be good for the cell. So uh, this uh, length of this polyadenylation or length of the poly A tail will actually going to decide the age of this particular messenger RNA or I will say 
the stability of this messenger RNA within the cytosol. So there are messenger RNAs where you have the very huge number of A's and they will actually going to be remain in the cytosol for a very very long time so that uh, they will be keep expressing the protein. So some of these uh, protein, um, messenger RNAs are belonging to the housekeeping genes. For example, you have the messenger RNA for actin, myosin, LDH. So these are the proteins which are required in a, you know, in a, there's a huge demand of these amino proteins. And that's why they are supposed to synthesize. And since they are housekeeping genes or they are actually housekeeping proteins, their uh, level will actually going to determine the health of that particular uh, cell and that's why they will actually going to have the huge number of uh, poly -A or a huge number of amino acids uh, a, a, a residues into the poly -A -tail. Now poly -A -tail is a very very interesting tool uh, because it uh, also provide the uh, stability to the messenger RNA at the other end, it also can be a tool to purify the messenger RNA from the uh, from the cytosol. Okay, so that we can do with the help of a affinity uh, column. Okay, and uh, that is what we are going to discuss now. So how we are going to purify the messenger RNA from the uh, from the cytosol? So there are two methods uh, by which we can be able to uh, isolate the messenger RNA. One, we can actually use the affinity uh, column, right? And we can use the affinity uh, DT columns, right? And the other approach is we can actually be able to use the trisome method, okay? Uh, in an affinity DT column, what we have is we have a, 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 a linker actually, and it is attached to the beads, okay? And this linker has the T residues, okay, which means it actually has the thymine. So when you have a thymine, you know that A is always making a pair with T and G is always making a pair with C. So utilizing this information, if you have the A's, what is present onto the messenger RNA. So what you can do is uh, you can actually be able to have the beads and you can actually be able to put the beads into the cytosol. So what will happen is that you are actually going to have the binding of A's which are which are be a part of the polyadenylation tail and uh, it is actually going to have the messenger RNA. So this is the messenger RNA and it is going to have this right and ultimately what you can do is you can actually be able to de do the elution and at the end what you are going to have you are going to have this eluted right so this is actually going to give you the complete pool of a single uh, this is another method which is the called as trisol method where you are actually going to use the trisol and that's how you are actually going to isolate the message RNA. So both of these methods we are going to discuss how you can be able to uh, isolate the messenger RNA from the uh, cytosol. So uh, for first method so this is the method one right and this is the method two so for the first method what you are going to do is you are going to test uh, grow the cells right so these are the target cells uh, you can have also the tissue right so depending on what the kind of material you are actually so if you it is a tissue then you are actually going to grind the tissue so that it uh, it's actually going to give you the single cell suspension, right? Uh, Sometimes you might have to use the enzymes and other kinds of treatments, so that we are not discussing here. So, but if it is a starting with the tissue, for example, you started with liver, right? So, if it is started with the liver, then it has to be grind uh, fine with the with the cell mortar or uh, the homogenizers. And then uh, the liver is actually going to give you the single cell suspension. And then from the single suspension, you are actually going to use the same way as you are actually going to use the cell from the cell culture. So you are going to put them into a lysis buffer. Mostly the lysis buffer contains the uh, SDS and also contains the proteins K. Okay. And it also contains the sometime SDS or sometime Titan X100. Okay, 
So it's basically going to contain the detergent and the protease K, and uh, it's also going to have the binding buffers. So you lyse the cells under the lysis and the binding buffer, and then you are going to. Uh, so this is what we have shown here, right? If you have a tissue, you can just do the homogenization so that you are going to have the single cell suspension, and then you can incubate this. Once you incubate this, it is actually going to lyse the cells, and you are going to have the cell lysate. Okay. So with the cell in the cell lysate, you can actually ever the you can do the spinning spin at uh, for example uh, 1000 rpm. So that we're actually going to remove the nucleus, and then it is actually going to give you the cell lysate because the nucleus is useless because it actually going to increase the uh, contamination. So nucleus, if you remove the nucleus, you are actually going to get rid of the DNA, right? And then uh, you take the messenger RNA, you put it into the binding buffer, and then you are actually going to have the oligo DT beads. And as I explained, the oligo DT beads are that you are going to have the agarose beads, and then it's also going to have the linker. That linker is actually going to have the T residues attached to it. Okay. This means it's these linker are actually going to have very strong and specific binding for the A residues. Okay. So when you do that, the messenger RNA, what is present in this uh, uh, particular cytosol, so it's not specific for a particular messenger RNA. It's actually be responsible for all the messenger RNA, and that's how it is actually going to bind the messenger RNA. So this is the messenger RNA. So they will interact with each other, and then you are going to do a washing with the buffer because there could be some non-specific interaction. So you can do a washing with the buffer. That washing can be done with the uh, you know the buffer with uh, with salt right so you can actually add some salt so that you are actually going to reduce the non-specific interactions and then you are actually going to do the illusions okay so once you have the pure sample you are actually going to do the illusion so illusion can be done with the so you at this step you collect the beads and then you are going to discard the supernatant and then you are going to do the illusion so you can add the uh, for example, you can add the poly T or you can actually add the thiamine, right? And then you can suspend that into the illusion buffer and the illusion buffer is going to allow or it's actually going to break the hydrogen bonding between the, uh, the poly T uh, tail which is attached to the beads versus the poly A tail which is present onto the messenger RNA and that's how the messenger RNA is going to be eluted. And then you can actually take this pure messenger RNA for the further downstream applications like uh, RT-PCR and you can use that for other kinds of applications. So this is exactly what people were doing when you are actually asking them to do the COVID testing. Okay, So they were taking your uh, saliva and um, the other kinds of samples and then they were doing this process to isolate the messenger RNA and then they were doing the RT-PCR with the help of the uh, primers uh, for for COVID, and uh, that's how they were saying that if it is a, uh, they were getting the amplifications of the DNA for the of the cDNA, then they are actually saying that it is COVID positive. Anyway, that is separate separate part that anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to talk about the uh, real-time PCR and uh, reverse transcriptase RT-PCR and uh, we'll also going to take up how you can be able to use the RT-PCR for this kind of applications. So this is uh, the, the first method where you are actually going to use the affinity column to purify the messenger RNA from the cell lysate or the tissue. Now let's move on to the next method and the next method is called as the trisol method. So the trisol method, RNA isolation by the trisol method, this RNA isolation by the trisol method uses the trisol, which is also called as the tri-reagent for the isolation of the total RNA. Trisol is a mixture of gonadine thiocyanate and phenol, which effectively dissolve the DNA, RNA and the protein okay, on homogenization or the lysis of the tissue samples. After adding the chloroform and centrifugation, 
the mixture separates into the three phases with the upper clear aqueous phase containing the RNA, interface containing the cell debris and the lower is the organic phase having the protein and the lipids. The next step in the extractions are the washes and the precipitation of the RNA. The first part of the protocol from the homogenized tissue in trisol to the point of an RNA pallet in 75% ethanol take less than an hour. The RNA can then be stored for long period of time at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So RNA is very stable when you are isolating with the trisol method and putting it into the uh, into the 75 percent ethanol. The same protocol can be used for RNA extraction from the cell culture. Uh, so uh, if you want to remove the DNA you can actually be able to treat the sample with DNAs and that's how it's actually going to remove the DNA part. So this is what it's actually going to say that if you have the uh, grinded adipose tissues for example this is the tissue right. So in the step one you are actually going to add the uh, add the uh, reagent right and that's how you are going to vertex then you are going to wait 5 minutes at room temperature and then uh, it is actually going to give you the aqueous phases and you are going to have the uh, different types of buffers and uh, what you are going to see here is that when you are going to have the phases you are going to have two phases, one is the RNA phase, the other one is going to be chloroform phase and in this phase you are actually going to have the protein plus lipid whereas in the aqueous phase you are going to have the messenger RNA and that you can actually be able to, so if you transfer this aqueous phase then you can actually be able to use that uh, by precipitation with the 75 percent ethanol and uh, you can actually be able to air dry this pellet and then, then you dissolve this into a RNA free buffer and that's how you are going to have the RNA. So let's see uh, uh, what are the different methods or different protocols right. So this procedure is uh, very effective for isolating the RNA molecules of all type from uh, 0.1 to 15 kb in length. However, there are commercial kits that enable the simple RNA extractions using a column that binds the RNA and so on. That is anyway we have discussed, right? Uh, so what are the requirements? So first thing is uh, you are actually requiring the trisol to require the 1.5 ml ependox, you require the centrifuge, you require the chloroform, isopropanol, RNA free water, micropipettes and the tips and the test specimen. So you require the either the tissue or the cell. So first step is that you are going to either take the tissue or the cell culture cells and then you are going to do the homogenization or the lysis and uh, once you do the vertexing and all other kind of things then you are actually going to add the trisol and uh, that actually is going to have the phase separations so you are going to have the aqueous phase and then you are also going to have the uh, organic phase in the organic phase you are going to have the lipid and you are going to have the protein right and then you collect the aqueous phase and then you add the uh, you add the uh, the uh, ethanol and that's how it's going to form the pellet the RNA pellet that you do air dry and then you add the RNA free water and dissolve things. Uh, procedure you in the step one you are going to add the trisol reagent to the cell and incubate at room temperature for five minutes. Then you transfer the cell lysate to a 1.5 ml centrifuge tube and add 0.2 ml of chloroform. So this is what you are going to do, right? In the step one, you are going to add the chloroform mix it thoroughly and incubate at room temperature for 5 minutes then you centrifuge the mixture to the centrifugation at 12,000 Rg for 15 minutes at 4 degree transfer the aqueous phase containing the total RNA to a fresh tube and precipitate the RNA by adding the 0.5 ml of isopropanol followed by incubation at room temperature for 5 minutes 10 minutes then you centrifuge the precipitate at 12,000 G for 10 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Um, and then, then you discard the supernatant and air dry the RNA pellet for 10 minutes and resuspend in 20 microliter of RNA free water. Remember that this is very important and 
uh, you can actually be able to either purchase the RNA free water from the commercial vendors or you actually can prepare the RNA free water in, in a laboratory. So it is not very difficult part. Then you perform the agro gel electrophoresis to check the integrity of the RNA. This anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the northern blotting. So that time we are going to discuss about how you can be able to run the RNA gels and how you can be able to test whether the RNA quality is good or not. The RNA isolation by the triazole method is showing after adding the chloroform and centrifugation the mixture separate into three phases with the upper phase the aqueous phase containing the RNA, the interface containing the cell debris and the lower is the organic phase containing the protein and the lipid. So uh, we have actually uh, prepared a very small demo clips where we have actually going to show you how you can be able to isolate the RNA with the help of the triazol method and uh, here the students have actually isolated the RNA from the bacterial cells but you can actually be able to follow the similar steps even with the mammalian cells or the tissue. As I said you know when we are going to talk, uh, deal with the tissue you are actually going to homogenize the tissue so that you can get the single cell suspicion. So uh, I hope this video or the demo video is going to be useful for you to advance your work. So today we will be learning about RNA isolations from the bacterial culture. As you can see this is a bacterial suspension already prepared. This is a suspension of Staphylococcus aureus and we have already allocated. So for RNA isolation we will be needing around 800 microliters. We have al already allocated in the app and drop tubes. So for to do that we need a laminar flow so that the contaminants doesn't get out. So as you already know we have already allocated around 800 microliters of bacterial suspension. So we will be today performing RNA isolation from this uh, bacterial suspension. RNA isolation is a very tricky step as because it is easily degradable in the environment. So to do that we have already given the UV for the whole uh, hood. We have cleaned the pipettes with the 70% ethanol and all the all the tips and everything has been UV irradiated before use. So for RNA isolation a protocol is the RNA isolation can be done in from three simple steps. One is to homogenize the uh, bacterial cells to take out the RNA from it then to precipitate the RNA and then to purify the RNA. So first step we will uh, do the homogenization of the RNA. So to do that we will be using the uh, uh, tri reagent. Uh, this reagent is basically is a triazol. So triazol contains basically gonadine, uh, thiocyanate and phenol and it, it actually has an, uh, it inhibits the RNA's activity so that the RNA is not degraded in the system. Now the protocol is, we will be adding around 160 microliters of triazole in the suspension culture. The cap should be put down in the laminar as always. And uh, this, this, this triazole reagent will help to homogenize as well as protect the RNA integrity in the suspension. So to homogenize is this way. If the thing is very simple we have to pipe it in and out faster so that the bacterial cells are homogenized as you can see in this step I am pipetting a little bit vigorously in and out after the thing is done uh, we will be adding chloroform around one fifth of the total volume of this so earlier it was 800 we have added around 160 more so it is around 950 microliters. So one fifth of the volume will be adding a chloroform in that. So chloroform will do one thing. It will help in separating out the phases in the mixture as such. So now we will be adding chloroform in the triazole mixture we have already done. So chloroform we have allocated in this reagent bottle. So we will be adding around one fifth of the volume which is around 32 microliters. So as I told you before, chloroform will help in separating out the phases. We do, actually triazol is very helpful. In By using triazol, we can separate all the three components, the DNA, RNA and protein as you will see in the subsequent ex ex experiment. So after, uh, after adding the chloroform, what we will do is we will tilt a little bit, very gently, which will not be harsh. We will tilt a little bit and then we will leave it for incubation for 2 to 3 minutes at room temperature. So I'll just put it here and wait for 2 to 3 minutes. 
So after that, we'll be putting it in the centrifuge. We have to centrifuge it for 12,000 RPM for 4 degree for 15 minutes so that the phase separation might happen. So I've already put the uh, in the centrifuge itself and I'll start it now. So it will run for 15 minutes and then we will get back. So as you can see the run is uh, just now going to stop. So we will be taking it out and then processing it further. So after we take out, we will see the layers getting formed. So after centrifugation, as you can see very clearly that there are three types of layers which are formed. This is an aqueous phase which has the RNA. A, a white type of layer you see this contains DNA and the pink layer if you see that contains the protein so from cryosol we can isolate all three DNA uh, pro RNA and protein together but for today's experiment we will be doing RNA isolation so we will be taking out the aqueous layer which is on the top we have to be really careful not to take out the uh, interface or the bottom layer so we will be allocating this in the new centrifuge very very carefully We are now allocating it, uh, the uh, aqueous phase in the new weapon draft tube. So it would be you have to be very careful. So not actually you have to take it very slowly, tilt a little bit and slowly pipe it out. Don't just take the interface, that is the whole point. So we have taken the phase, we will be allocating it now. There's still some is left, so I'll try to take more out of it. As you can see, uh, I'm tilting it so that I will see clearly where the thing is going on so it is always safe to not touch the interface so as you can see I have already allocated it and have not touched the interface and this much RNA is more than enough for our experiment technically speaking we should not uh, talk when we are doing RNA isolation as our when our aerosols from when we are talking might contain some type of RNAs which might degrade the RNA. So when we are doing RNA isolation we should not talk much about it. Now we will be adding uh, isopropanol alcohol. This will help to precipitate the RNA from the aqueous phase. So how will we do that? We will be actually centrifuging it after adding equal volumes of isopropanol. Now we are centrifuging it for 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes. So this will help out to precipitate the RNA after addition of isopropyl alcohol. So now the centrifuge is almost complete. We will be moving to the last step of the RNA isolation which is the purification step by adding around 70% ethanol and then again introducing it back. Now we have centrifuged it after the addition of isopropanol alcohol. 
here uh, as you can see the palate is a little very less as well as it is a little bit shaky that might be due to the less uh, uh, in less suspension culture i think the bacteria was not that much to give a very big thick palate but still the palate is there so now we have to very carefully remove the acetic coconut alcohol and add 70% alcohol which we have already prepared so for the 70% alcohol preparation we have used uh, merk grade ethanol and we have used double distilled autoclave water which is filtered using 0.2 micron meter uh, membrane filters so let us remove this isopropanol first we have to remove very slowly so as to not take the pellet out and if you are not sure whether the pellet will come or not you can leave it and then again take a small pipette like for example i am using a p1000 which there is a grading of 100 to 1000 so for now i will leave this pipette and then i will take another pipette which is a, uh, of a lower volume so that i can slowly slowly take out the isopropanol so this is a pipette of 20 to 200 microliter so this would be a best fit for my thing now so i'll be setting it to around 100 microliters is less volume and easily we can take it slowly now we have taken out the isopropanol and we'll be adding 70% ethanol so 70% ethanol we have to resuspend the pellet so what we have to do is we will add around 1 ml so you can add 1 ml you can add 500 ml this is a washing step also and purifying step also for rna so after you add you have to pipe it in and out a little bit so that the things is resuspended and after that we will go ahead with the last centrifugation which is 10000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degree centigrade so i am adding around 1 ml completely and it is done so we will go ahead with the centrifuge now we are performing the last centrifugation step of the entire protocol We'll be doing 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes at 4 degree centigrade, and this will be helpful uh, for washing the RNA. Now we have uh, centrifuged the last step, which was after addition of ethanol, 70 percent. So the the next step is to air dry, take out the whole ethanol, air dry it. and after air drying it for 10 to 15 minutes we will add rna's water so that we can resuspend the pellet in it so let's take out the rna uh, take out the sorry ethanol after the this has step has been done so what we can do is because the pellet is there so we can just little bit so that the ethanol residual ethanol will come out here now we will keep it for air drying now is after 15 minutes the, the thing is fully dried so now we will be adding the rna free water so this water we have already i showed you before we have made the 70% ethanol so 
we will be adding around 50 microliters to it and then resuspending the pellet again. So just add and resuspend it a little bit. Don't be too harsh. Pipe it a little bit and then just, just leave it. So the next step will be to quantify this RNA. First we will quantify it using nano drop and secondly we will see the RNA using the gel electrophoresis. So the RNA can be stored uh, at minus 20 degrees centigrade. We should not store it at 4 degrees for short time. So I will be storing this at minus 20 degrees centigrade till further experiments are done in this. Now today we will be doing RNA quantification. So this is an instrument, is a nano drop machine. So this will measure the amount of RNA in one microliter. So we will go to the nucleic acid section. As you can see in nucleic acid section, uh, there are a lot of assays which you can do. You can do protein, list everything. So this is the whole template. Here you will see the concentration. This is 8 to 60 by 280 reading. A peak will come if the RNA is there. So uh, now it is set for DSDNA, means double stranded DNA. What we will do is we will set for RNA. And now we have clicked RNA as you can see. We will proceed with the blank addition. So to measure blank, first what we will do as you can see here. So this is a portion where we load our sample area. So we will first clean it nicely. Both sides, wipe it. This is a lint free wipe. After that we will add RNAs free water where we have already suspended uh, in our RNA. So we will add 1 microliter exactly. So here addition is to be done on the, the red dot as you can see here. So I will be adding directly here for RNA quantification. So now the whole sample has been loaded. I will close it and select blank as you can see here. So I will click on blank now. So now it will adjust the blank reading first and then after that we have to load our sample. So now the blank has set, we will load our sample after that. So to do that we have to first wipe here again because we have already added and then what we have to do is take our RNA whatever we have made that day and uh, just add it close it and say sample this green one this is sample so we'll just click it here so it will measure the RNA content in the concentration of nanogram per microliter. So as you can see RNA the concentration is 556.52 the A to 60 by 280 reading is 2.23 something which is a very good reading there is no contamination a peak a nice peak we can see at 260 and so it's a very good amount of RNA without no, con no contamination of protein and DNA. So now uh, I am sure you might have seen the demo video and this demo video could be very useful for you to replicate these steps uh, in your laboratory although we have shown the steps with the help of the simple system like the prokaryotic system uh, but uh, it, it can be replicated with the other type of cells also. So you can use the mammalian cells, you can use the yeast, you can use the, uh, the uh, even the different types of uh, tissue materials or you can actually be able to use the bacterial cells. The, the first step one is that where you are actually going to prepare the cell lysate. After that the subsequent steps are going to be remain identical whether it is a prokaryotic cell whether it is a eukaryotic cell. Now once you isolated the RNA right you are actually going to have the first question what will be the concentration of this RNA and whether the quality of this RNA is good or not. Just remember that when we were talking about the DNA, we have also asked the same thing, right? So in the next step, we are going to talk about the uh, DNA, right, RNA, uh, whether the concentration and as well as the purity. 
So the purity of the RNA can be detected by the same way that RNA is also going to absorb very strongly at 260 uh, nanometer. So what you can do is you can take the absorbance at the 260 nanometer right and uh, once you do the RNA at 260 nanometer it is actually going to give you the uh, values. So if there is a uh, you know the pure RNA right if it is a pure RNA it is actually going to have the uh, very specific uh, absorbance at the 260 nanometer if it having the protein contamination then it is actually going to have the ratio of 260 by 280 uh, vary from the RNA species so uh, then it is actually going to have the so if it is a pure RNA the 260 by 280 would be around Two, right because RNA is, uh, absorbs very strongly at 260 nanometer but if it is having the protein contamination then it is actually going to have the level at less than uh, 2 right and uh, that is how you can be able to know the purity of the system right or you can be able to have the purity of RNA. Now the next question comes is how you can be able to do the estimations. So the estimation can be done at the absorbance right so you can take the absorbance at 260 nanometer and you can be able to use the uh, formula to determine the assertions or you can actually be able to use the colorimetric method so uh, rna estimation by the orsinol method remember that when we were talking about the uh, dna estimations we have talking about that the uh, we have the, we have discussed about the DPA method right so the what is the principle this is a general reaction for pentoses and depends upon the formation of purfural when the pentose is heated with the concentrated hydrochloric acid orsinol react with the purfural in the presence of the ferric chloride as a catalyst to give the green color which can be measured at 660 nanometer so you are what you are going to do is RNA RNA is ribonucleic acid right which means is going to have the ribose as a sugar right remember that for the dna it is deoxyribose and that's why so when you heat this rna in the presence of the scl it is actually going to form the furfural right uh, and the furfural is actually going to react with the orsinol and it is going to give you the green color compound or solution and that actually is going to have the lambda max at 665 nanometer okay so this 665 nanometer so what you can do is you can actually be able to do a calibration curve with the lamp uh, absorbance at 665 nanometer versus the RNA right so you can actually we take the uh, different uh, concentration of RNA and that's how it is actually going to give you the calibration curve and then you can actually be able to run the same with the unknown samples and then suppose this is the absorbance of the unknown samples and then you can actually be able to determine the concentration of the RNA so what are the things you require so you require the standard rna solutions so you can require the 0.2 mg per ml in 1% per chloric acid or the buffer saline then you also require the orsinol reagent so you can dissolve the 0.1 gram of ferric chloride in 100 ml of concentrated scl and add the 3.5 ml of 6% weight by volume orsinol in the alcohol and then you also require the buffered saline so you can actually make the NaCl and you can make the citrate buffer pH 7. Uh, so it's very simple you don't require a lot of reagents also and then the procedure so you can actually be able to pipette out the different concentration or different amount of the RNA uh, like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 ml and uh, to a working standard to a release of labeled test tubes then you pipette out the 1 ml of the given sample in another test tube make up the volume to 1 ml in all the test tubes uh, test tube with a 1 ml of distilled water serves as a blank right so that is the blank reaction so that you know what will be the background absorbance of the orsinol reagent itself 
then you add the 2 ml of orthogonal reagent to all the test tube including the test tube labeled as the blank and as well as the unknowns mix the content of the tube by vertexing or shaking of the tube and heat on a boiling water bath for 20 minutes so this is step and then cool the content and record the absorbent at 660 nanometer against the black right uh, then plot the standard curve by taking the absorbance concentration of the RNA along the x-axis and the absorbance at 650 by the y-axis. Then from this is standard curve, calculate the concentration of the RNA in the given sample. So this is the um, this is the table what you are going to use. So from the standard RNA stock, you are going to have the 0, 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0 0.1 then you add the water so make up the volume at 1 ml so total volume of the rna and the water is going to be 1 ml so for example in this case you don't have the rna so you are going to only take the 1 ml water in this case you have 0 0.8 0 0.2 so you are going to add 0 0.8 so total is actually going to be 1 ml okay and then um, take this table and then for unknown you are going to take the 1 ml of unknown you can take the other values of unknown also but accordingly you are going to add the water and then you are going to add the volume of reagents so you are going to add the 2 ml of the orthogonal reagent uh, which you are going to prepare in the with the help of the ferric chloride and uh, hcl and orthogonal and then you incubate this in boiling water bath for 20 minutes then you cool down and then you are going to take the absorbance so absorbance what you are going to get for the zero uh, rna is going to be treated as the blank right and this has to be subtracted although you are not going to get the zero values but you are going to uh, subtract uh, that value so it's going to be zero and then uh, you are going to have some values for other value, other considerations and for the unknown as well using these values you can be able to draw a calibration curve so what you're going to do is you are going to have the absorbance at the 665 versus the RNA uh, um, concentrations right which means the microgram and then you are going to have the standard curve so with the help of the standard curve so you can be able to determine the concentration of the unknown RNA species right and if you want to read more about the RNA estimations and other kinds of things you can be able to go with this plumber's book this is a very important, uh, very interesting book which is dealing with the practical aspect of the biochemistry and uh, it's very interesting because it gives you the step by step, uh, uh, you know, the steps how you can be able to follow and how you can be able to prepare the recipes and so on. So uh, this is uh, all about the RNA what we have discussed, uh, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the structure of the messenger RNA and the uh, different uh, parts of the messenger RNA and what are their functions and then uh, we have also discussed about how you can be able to isolate the RNA and how you can be able to verify the uh, RNA with the help of the estimate uh, with the help of the uh, estimations and with the help of the uh, purity of the RNA. So with this I would like to conclude our lecture here, our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, proteins which are going to be the building block and then we are also going to discuss about the different types of enzymes uh, which are actually going to be participate into the molecular biology. So with this I would like to conclude my lecture here, thank you. Mm -hmm.